Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is just one of over 80 episodes we release monthly. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud, which comes at a considerable expense. To help cover these costs, you might hear some advertisements throughout this episode. While we retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may encounter modern ads. We promise to keep these ads to a minimum and try to place them where you would have originally heard them when they aired. If you prefer an ad-free experience, you can support us by becoming a member on our Patreon page. Go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, that's otrwesterns.com slash donate for more information. I want to emphasize that we're committed to providing this content to you for free, but also want to be transparent about the financial realities of producing these shows. As a reminder, if you're listening to this episode on a service you pay for, please know that they do not support this podcast in any way, and the ads will be in this episode. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke, original air dates January 25th, 1959, and the title is The Boots. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Here's Frankie Lane. I never feel like singing with a bad cold, so I take wonderful four-way cold tablets to relieve my cold misery fast. Right. Tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. So when you catch cold, take my advice. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve those nasty cold miseries and feel better quickly. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. And now a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Tell me you're Zeno Smith. Yeah, that's right, young fella. Well, they tell me Zeno Smith's got a big reputation for handling a gun. Well, I didn't ask for it. But you got it. That's what's important. It's not such a good thing to have, Fergus. And why not? Because it attracts young fools like you to try me out and get themselves killed. But if I don't get killed, I'll kill you instead. Well, you'll have yourself a pretty fair start as a gunman. You'll have had your last peaceful night's sleep. 
I don't mind. Now, look, Fergus. I just want to have a quiet drink and then go to bed. I'm worn out. Now, leave me be, will you? You see that big picture of Valley Forge that got hung on the wall down there? You see them wires holding it up? I'm not interested, I tell you. You watched. Tolerable shooting, is he no? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's not bad. <laughs> not bad. Let's see you do better. Fergus, I told you I'm I'm worn out. I haven't slept for nights. I'm not interested in your games. I ain't playing games with you, Zeno. Now draw. No. All right. And I will. You didn't even try. You froze. You froze solid. Maybe this will thaw you out. <laughs> Look at him, everybody. The great Zeno Smith, crawling like a snake. And I done it. Hank Fergus. Just remember that. Hank Fergus. Anybody like to try me? I didn't think so. You're all cowards in Dodge City. I'm leaving. Good night, Zeno Smith. Barkeep. Yes, sir. Barkeep, give me a whole bottle of whiskey. A full one, right up to the top. You've had enough for tonight. Oh, I got some money to pay for it, Miss Kitty. You see? I didn't I mean that, you know. Let him drink, Kitty. Huh? He never causes any trouble. Oh, Matt? All right, Gina. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Barkeep, here's the money. Barkeep. Now get the bottle out. You're a big help, Matt. You can't stop Zeno Smith from drinking, Kitty. He'll sober up in a day or so. Yeah, maybe for a whole week. Now, he's been doing it for years. Yeah, about ten, they tell me. He was a nice fellow, Matt. What got him started drinking anyway? I don't know. It was long before my time. But I've heard he used to be something of a gunman. Zeno Smith? That's kind of hard to believe. A gunman loses his nerve. He loses everything, Kitty. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, so they say. Some newcomer called him out and he froze. So he took the drink, huh? It helps him forget, I guess. At least for a couple of days a week. Yeah. Well, it's mighty good of Mr. Jonas to keep him on at the general store. Most people wouldn't be that patient with him. Jonas trusts him, Kitty. Even when he's drunk? When he's drunk, he doesn't go near the store. Little Tommy sees to that. What a combination. A 45-year-old drunk and a 13-year-old orphan boy. Now they're good company for each other. Oh, you men. Well, there he goes with his bottle. Matt, does Tommy know about Zeno backing down that time? Now, that's one thing everybody's been decent about. They've never told the boys. Good. That's a funny thing, Kitty. They say it happened right here at the Long Branch. Well, this place has got a lot of history. I'm just as glad I've missed. Yeah, me too. Well, I'd better get going now. Come by later, man. I'll try. So long. So long. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Mr. Dillon, you better get out there. 
some tougher plague than Zeno Smith. They're pretty drunk and they could hurt him. They, they, they wouldn't listen to me. Well, what are they doing to him? Oh, they smashed a bottle of bourbon he was carrying and now they're agging him to go home and put on his gun. Show you now. Yonder they are. On the street. Show it. Show it. By heaven, I'll show every one of you. All right, get away from him, you men. Leave him alone. I'll show you. Look at him. Look at him run. Let him go. If one of you dares to face me, I'll show you. Forget it, Zeno. They've well, gone. Well, Marshal, they think I'm a coward. They think I won't put on a gun. I'll show them. You're not a coward, Zeno. You don't have to show anybody anything. Yes, I do. I'm going to right now. They'll see. No fool around with me. You gonna let him do it, Mr. Dillon? That's Kentucky courage he's using, Chester. He'll sober up fast enough. Maybe so. But I'm thinking one of these days he'll get on that bottle and come out shooting for a real. Well, you never know, Chester. When acid indigestion slows you down, get relief quickly, safely, effectively. Totally upset fast with the modern antacid that goes everywhere with you. Do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket row? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Tums are the little white tablets in the little green pocket row. Tums for the tummy. T-U-M-S. Bring relief quicker than you'd ever guess. Best for any kind of acid distress. Keep them handy in the pocket row. Keep your tummy under Tums control. No acid rebound with modern Tums. Get Tums and cents. Three-roll pack a quarter. Or the new Tums six-roll pack with three metal carrier, 49 cents. Jonas was asking for you over at Gerald's door. Oh, no, no. Oh, I can't work today, boy. Oh, my head's got an axe stuck in it. You was awful drunk when you come home last night, Gina. You was even looking for your gun. Huh? I was? I hit it, you know. It's under the mattress. You was talking about some fellas, you know, how you was going to take your gun and face them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Oh, I'm sick, Tommy. But you got to go to work. You spent all your money last night. Well, there's food in the house. I, I'll get some money next week. Next week? Well, my birthday's tomorrow, you know. You, you promised me a pair of boots. Don't uh, you even remember? I forgot. I mean, I'll get him, Tommy. I, I promise I will. But how? You, you're broke. You can't work today. Mr. Jonas won't advance you no money. You you leave it to me, Tommy. You're going to have your boots. I promise. Sure. Sure, you know. I'll fix you some coffee. Oh, Tommy, boy, I'm just no good. No good for anything. We gonna get that beer now, Mr. Dillon? You always thirsty, Chester. <laughs> it seems like it, don't it? <laughs> Yonder. What? Ain't that Zeno's boy, Tommy? Oh, yeah. Why, looks like he's crying. 
to stand there looking in that store window and crying. Oh, that poor little fella. Uh, Tommy? What's wrong? Uh, nothing, Marshal. Nothing. Uh, ought to be something wrong. Well, what is it? Zeno promised me a pair of them boots in the window there. Tomorrow's my birthday. Oh. He's homesick. He can't even work. Well, Tommy, uh, you know, we don't always get what we want. But Zeno's generally pretty good to you, and he, he's probably feeling mighty sorry about this. Sure, maybe he'll get you some boots next year. Next year's too late. I'll be 14 tomorrow, and I'm going to get me a job at the stable so I can learn to ride and make a living for myself. You're going to be 14 tomorrow, huh? Well, you're practically a man then, Tommy. You know, men have to learn to take hard knocks. You're right, Marshal. I've been seeing a studio. I'm okay now. Sure you are. Well, I gotta get back to Zeno now. He may need me. Go on, Marshal. Yes, sir. Bye. Uh, he's an awful good boy, ain't he, Mr. John? He's gonna make out all right, Chester. Well, what'd you say? Let's get our beer and the lady gay, huh? Okay, sir. Did I pay you later, Barkey? Can't you trust me for one little whiskey? Nope. I got half a mind to put another hole in your nose. Stay back, Chester. Yes, sir. Ten years since I've been in this town, it stinks just as bad as it ever did. You, uh... You got a complaint, mister? Oh. You're the marshal. So? I'm Hank Fergus, marshal. You make that sound like I should know you. You never heard of me? No. Well, I have been in California quite a spell. Uh Uh-huh. This is Dodge, Fergus, and I run Dodge. And gunmen with big reputations come and go a lot here. But mostly they go. Look, Marshal, I don't aim to cause no trouble. I'll tell you the honest truth. I'm heading for St. Louis. And I kind of went broke on the way. Thought I'd stop by a Dodge and make me a little money gambling, that's all. Sure. I'm broke. It's the truth, Marshal. Well, being broke sure ain't nothing new around here. I'm most generally always broke. Marshal, I hope you're convinced of my peaceful aim. I'll let you know when I'm not, Fergus. I'll let you know real fast. You sure don't make it easy for a man, do you? I'm not paid to make it easy for men like you. Goodbye, Marshal. My land, Miss Dillon, ain't you being kindly hard on him? You're forgetting something, Chester. What? He came here to make some money and he's broke. Now, where's he going to get the stake to start gambling? <laughs> See how you're getting along. No, that's not true. You want to call me a liar, you better get off that bed and put on a gun, Zeno. Or don't you wear a gun no more. What do you want here, Fergus? I asked around town about you, Zeno. I had a lot of things. Most everything to get. What for? What are you up to? One thing I find out is that you carry a key to the general store. I'm broke, you know. Well, I ain't got any money. I need a little stake to start gambling with. And I don't want no trouble with that marshal. 
Oh, I got to thinking maybe you could help me. Help you rob the store, sure. Well, I won't do it, Fergus. I'm a lot of things, but I ain't no thief. I you never... know what? Uh, Tommy, don't you bother. Wait a minute. Oh, now, boy. Come on in, son. Tommy, I said not to bother. I heard Tommy. about Tommy, too, Zeno. What'd you hear? What are you talking about? Tommy, will you please He's go on? He's kind of upset, son. He thinks there's things a boy shouldn't know. What things? Things about him, for example. Right, Zeno? Fergus, don't now. I know everything about Zeno, mister. Well, now let's see. Do you know that one time right here in Dodge about, uh... Fergus? Oh, just how long ago was it? All Zeno? right, you win. I thought I would. What's he win, Zeno? Never mind, Tommy. Well, I want to know what this is you all about. You heard me now, Tommy. I want to know. You tell oh, me what? Now. This set up. I'm sorry. I I, I I didn't mean to. I didn't. Tommy, wait a minute. Now, come back. Well, you're mighty rough, Zeno, on kids. Get out, Fergus. Get out, will you? Sure. But I'll be back tonight. You be here. I'll be here. If you promise not to tell that boy about... about what happened. Of course not. I wouldn't want him to know what a coward you are. At least not if I get the cash box out of that general store without making no trouble. I'll be back tonight. Join CBS Radio's Amos and Andy Music Hall for a hilarious combination of music and fun. Five nights a week, you'll enjoy the wonderful characterizations of these beloved comedy favorites. Amos and Andy also invite some of the biggest names in show business to their music hall to join the super-duper goings-on. The doors of their grand ballroom of the Lodge of the Mystic Knights of the Sea are open every Monday through Friday evening on most of these same CBS radio stations. Laugh along with Amos and Andy and the Kingfish, who will bring you a whole ballroom filled with the music of America's top song hits. The antics of these famous fun makers will put you in a light-hearted mood as they get light-headed about everything from high finance to romance. Get together with your whole family and live it up with the comedy, music, and fun you'll find at the Amos and Andy Music Hall. You don't have to jot down the date or tie a string around your finger to remember this invitation. All you have to do is keep your dial set where it is, on CBS Radio, which is the address of the Amos and Andy Music Hall five times a week. Good evening, Marshal Dillon. Huh? Uh, You've been drinking again, Doc? Oh. Little glass of wine maketh glad the heart. There hasn't been a glass of wine in Dodge since the flood, Doc. Sit down. <laughs> Thank you. I presume you refer to the flood Noah weathered so skillfully. I do. Uh, great man, Noah. Sure. Without him, there wouldn't be all the gunmen and murderers and horse thieves and plain common bums walking around the earth. Yes, that's true. But there wouldn't be you or me either. <sighs> well, I'm not too much impressed, Doc. That boy's up kind of late. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Doc. Tommy. Hello, Tommy. M- Marshal, i got to talk to you. Oh, what's on your mind? I-, I had to come to you, Marshal. I've been thinking on it for hours. you got to stop it. Stop what? That man, man, that Fergus. I waited outside the door and I heard him talking. He's got something on Zeno, Marshal. And he's going to make him help rob the cash box out of the general store. What? Tonight. You've got to stop it, Marshal. I'll get over there right now, Tommy. Oh, wait a minute, Matt. I saw Zena buying a bottle of liquor a few hours ago. He's probably dead drunk by now. Then you come along, too, Doc. We'll sober him up and find out what this is all about. Hello, 
If Zeno ain't at home, he's got to be in here robbing the store, don't he, Marshal? We'll soon find out, Tommy. The store is dark. I don't see anybody in there. No. Well, the door's locked. Uh, Zeno's key fits the back door, Marshal, not this one. Let's go around back, then. Down the alley here. When did you last see Zeno, Tommy? Oh, this afternoon, Doc, when he hit me and ran out. Quiet now. Wait a minute. What's that? It's Zeno. Here, stay back, Tommy. You do as I say. Okay, Marshal. Dead drunk, just as I said. Take a look at him, Doc. Oh, well, I'll leave him be. Well, he's not quite out. That's that sack he's holding. Money from the cash box, probably. Here, let me have that. Mm-hmm. No, no, don't touch it. Marshal, come here quick. Huh? Look, I've seen him laying here. Well, who is it, Tommy? That man, Ferguson. By golly, it is. He's dead, Tommy. Dead. And there's nothing on him. No money in from the cash box. No. And Zeno's got it. He took it. I'm afraid it kind of looks that way, Tommy. Oh, gee, Marshal. I'm sorry, Tommy. Come on. Matt, this man has been shot. What? Zeno shot. Right through the lungs. He's filling up bad. No, no. Zeno. Zeno. Here's a gun I found on him, no, Matt. It, it, Let's leave him alone, Doc. Sure, Matt. It's Looks like they fought over who got the money, Doc. Oh. Well, it took money and liquor to do it, but at least he know handle a gun again. Yeah. Marshal, Doc. Look. My boots. He got me my boots. So that's what was in that sack. Tommy. Uh, what, you know? Them boots. I owe Mr. Jones for them. He'd take my gun and give it to him. I made a, I made a deal with him. I'm dying, son. No, Zeno. You, you be a man, boy. I'm counting on you. Don't die, Zeno. Zeno. Marshal. He's dead, Tommy. Here's his gun, Tommy. You give it to Mr. Jonas tomorrow. And start wearing those boots. You're a man now. And you can walk proud in them, Tommy. Mighty proud. Cannon thundered and rockets flared over the barricades in the Battle of New Orleans. And Andrew Jackson won a great victory for the United States. There was only one thing askew with the victory. A month before, United States and British envoys in Europe had signed a treaty ending the war. 2,000 men died at New Orleans because they didn't know their countries were at peace. That, of course, was in 1815 when news traveled by sailing ship. Today, if a shot is fired in the Middle East, Lowell Thomas has the whole story for you by dinner time. If a conference is held in Europe, a CBS News correspondent tells you its highlights on the World News Roundup within hours. Start this week to hear the World News Roundup and Lowell Thomas regularly. Both programs are heard Monday through Friday on CBS Radio over most of these same stations.
produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, and Richard Beale. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gun Smoke. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.